All right, I wanted to make a quick video tonight to talk a little bit about how you can add React Native to an existing iOS application. So one of the things I found recently going through the React Native documentation is that uh, they have a lot of examples and stuff on how to get a new project set up and how to you know manipulate that project and add the modules and stuff that you want to React Native. But the documentation they have for adding to an existing Android iOS application is woefully out of date, specifically the iOS application. So I want to show exactly how you would accomplish this in 2022. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, I have made a post here. It's on my website. I'll also have it up on Medium soon on all the different steps you need to add an existing uh uh, application or uh, basically how to add a React Native application to an existing iOS application. So let's go ahead and show exactly what we're going to do tonight. So the first thing I want to show was I have this uh, existing project here. Uh, I just call Blink App. I'm going to open this up right here. And as you can see here, this is just a straight Swift uh, UI kit type application. So it's assuming you're using UIKit, not uh, Swift UI. And I just have this uh, one view controller in here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to modify this view controller so that it actually contains React Native content inside of it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I am going to clear out my terminal. And I am going to create a new project here. So let's just go over here and we'll do make dir, uh, and I'm gonna call this my React native app. And we're gonna create that and we're going to CD into that. So now we have that React native app. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create like a brand new node uh, project inside of here. And so we can do that by typing in here npm uh, net dash y. And this is going to create a fresh uh, package.json file. So now that we have that open, I'm going to just come over here. I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to call this touch index.js. And let's go ahead and let's uh, open this up. Uh, so I'm going to do that using Visual Studio Code. And now we have Visual Studio Code. I have this project in here. I'm going to modify this so that on the start, what we actually want to do is we want to start up React Native. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say npx react native and start just like that and now that we've done that uh, I'm going to use yarn to actually start modifying use this so the react native community and react I believe in general they like using yarn as the, the package manager so one thing you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that you have yarn already installed on your Mac before you start doing this so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say yarn add and we'll say React Native. And I do not have Yarn installed. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do to get Yarn installed. So if I come over here and I add in, I'm just gonna to go to the React, actually I'm just gonna come here and do a search here. Let's see here, add Yarn. So to install this, uh, we can actually use npm to install this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So let's go back to our terminal and I'm going to install that. And right now it's giving me a warning because I did not use um, uh, I did not use the su or the uh, the root. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and try installing that again. And this time I'm going to make sure I do it with sudo. We have a visitor. Okay, so now I have Yarn installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that command again. 
So here it's going ahead and it's adding all the React Native dependencies here to, to my project. Excuse me while I edit this video. All right, so we can see here, it's going through here, it's adding all the dependencies and stuff that I need uh, for this React Native project. So it's done that. And one of the things we need to do here is now that we've uh, installed React Native in here, what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, we have uh, added React uh, any unmet uh, peer dependencies. So in this case, if you look at this line right here, it says React Native version 68.1, which is the current version of React Native, uh, needs React 17.0.2. So let's go ahead and add that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in yarn add React Native 17.0.2. And now that's added React in the project. So if I come back here and I take a look at our package.json file, we can see here that I've included React and I have React Native in here. So now that we have that in here, what we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, ex pre-existing iOS application in here, but we're going to do it inside of a folder called iOS. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to type in Mac, or we'll make a directory called iOS. And let's open that up. So here's our directory here. And I've got my blank app from the application I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the contents of this blank app. And I'm going to put this inside of my iOS folder. So now if I go inside the iOS folder, I have all of the blank app uh, that I need in there in order to be able to uh, I, uh, basically uh, use this inside of my React Native project. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here into the terminal and I'm just going to make sure that I can come in here, I can go into iOS, take a look at that, and sure enough, the, my Blink app is now inside of there. So what I'm going to do uh, now that I've uh, added this in here is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in uh, Podinet. And what Podinet will do is it'll use CocoaPods uh, to actually uh, initialize the files that we need in order to be able to configure uh, CocoaPods in here. So one of the key issues I ran into trying to install, uh, uh, basically install React Native into existing uh, iOS application is that the instructions specifically around CocoaPods is out of date on the React Native website. And so what I want to do is go ahead and show what you need to do in order to be able to uh, get CocoaPods installing and working with your existing uh, project. So in some cases you may already have CocoaPods and be using CocoaPods, but if you're not, this is what you need to do. So if I come over here and I type in pod init and take a look at my folder here, it's created a file here called pod file. And if I come up here and I take a look at that file, uh, it looks like this. So it just creates a uh, it just creates a very simple it recognized that I had a project in there called blank app and it has just basically the, the base thing that I need to be able to do if I wanted to be able to uh, do a pod install. And so what we need to do now is we need to set this up so that it'll install React Native, all the React Native uh, dependencies that we need inside of this application. So let me show you how you can do that. So in my documentation, or uh, my blog post, uh, one of the things I did is I went in here and I showed specifically what you need to do to change this, uh, this file so that it includes it. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna copy out these two uh, requires in here. And I'm gonna come back into my terminal here and I'm just gonna use vim to edit this file. So let's come over here and I'm gonna say vim pod file and as you can see here it is basically empty uh, actually it's empty because I typed in the wrong name so I'm just quit out of here all right let me try it again with the spell correctly all right so here's our app so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add these two requires in here so now what this will do is this will use scripts uh, that are part of uh, basically the Ruby CocoaPod scripts that you can use to uh, 
use additional functionality in here. And so there's a couple changes I'm going to make to this file. One of the changes I'm going to do is I'm going to add a specific platform. I just want to target uh, iOS 13 or higher. And so if I come back in here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this line and add this new line in here. And now that I've done that, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to include this function here called use react native. And what this will do is if I actually come in here, oops, wrong editor. If I go back here into them, uh, I'm going to just delete these lines right here. And I'm going to paste that in. So what this does is this essentially does all the stuff where we would specifically have to mention all the different uh, dependencies that we needed for React to work. It's just going to do all that stuff automatically here inside of our file. So now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to escape and I'm going to write this file. And now that I've done that, I've modified the file, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I want to install those dependencies using the pod install command. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to type in pod install. It's going to look at the pod file for the configuration, run this, and we can see that it's actually coming through here and it's adding all of these React Native modules right here inside of the uh, inside of our project. And so that looks like that is done. And if I come back here and I ls in my folder, we can see here that there's actually the original blank app.xcode proj file, but there's also this one called xc workspace. That's actually a workspace file. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to open up uh, the workspace now for making our changes instead of using the, uh, the original uh, Xcode project. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to come here and I'm going to type in open that file. And now it's opened up a, a workspace file with our original Xcode project in here along with all of our CocoaPods for all the React Native stuff that we're doing. So here's all the React Native stuff. It's inside of this uh, pods project. All of our stuff's inside of its original project. So now we've done that, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna make a couple quick changes in my application in order to be able to consume React Native content inside of it. So to do that, uh, I have this view controller I've already written here inside of the class. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to make a couple of, add a couple of new functions in here. Uh, I'm going to use an override for load view. And then from that, I'm going to call in a function that I've created that is going to set up this RCT root view. And the RCT root view, essentially, that's where your React Native content is going to run. So let's come back into Xcode. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add these functions back in here. And so now we can see that we have these functions in here. And I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And so what this will do is it's going to come out here and it's going to look for this, uh, uh, this location here, right? And so what we're doing right now is we're setting it up so we can debug. We can actually run the Metro uh, development server, which can uh, host our React Native content. And as you can see, we're getting a warning. The reason why we're getting a warning is one of the things we need to do to this file, or specifically to this uh, Swift class, is we need to import in React. And so what it should do now is it should go ahead and recognize uh, that type. And so now, uh, if I were to run this, I could at least compile this. But we need to do one more thing in order for it to, uh, to run. So right here, uh, we've specifically mentioned a, a module name called your app, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to my post here. And what I've done is I've created just a very simple uh, React Native application. I'm just going to copy this out of here. But you can see what it's doing is if we come back into our project here. I'm just going to CD out. And let's uh, use Vim to open up our index.js. I'm going to come over here and paste that code in here. And so what this code is actually doing here, if we take a look at it, we can see here that we're importing in a text to view from React Native, but also this app registry, right? And what this app registry does is it lets us register a component. In this case, I'm registering a component uh, here called uh, your app, and I'm just basically naming it your app. So when we go to run this, what it's going to do is it's actually going to 
run this, uh, this React Native content inside of that RCT uh, root view that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of here and uh, write, oops. Let's escape and I'm going to uh, write that. And so now uh, we've made that modification here. So if I come over here and I come back to my project and I type in yarn start, this actually will start up uh, our Metro server. And so we need to have this running before we go to run our application. So now if I come back here into Xcode, and I'm just going to set this up so that it's using, uh, let's see, an iOS 13 Pro Max simulator. I'm going to go ahead and hit run on this. And it's compiling. This may take a minute or so to compile. And what this is going to do is it's now it's going to look at this location here on my Mac, this localhost 8081. And there's a bundle that's been created by that Metro server. So what should happen is now that we are uh, compiling this and creating this, uh, this application, when it goes to render this root view, it will actually look at that location uh, for our React Native uh, application. So my uh, simulator is starting up. I'm going to go ahead and bring that over here to this screen so we can see what it's doing. And one of the things to keep in mind here is that once this loads up, we should get a Metro uh, and yep, there we go. It's bundling. And there, it just created our, our React Native content here inside of our application. So one of the things that's nice about this is now that we've created this and we're using Metro, Metro will actually do live updates, right? Which is really nice. And if you looked at some of the changes that Apple and, uh, and uh, Google have made recently with uh, Swift UI and Compose, they're trying to set it up so that you can make live changes here into your application as you're coding, which is a really nice feature, the, the, that whole live reload experience that you have as a web developer. So what I'm gonna go over here and do is I'm gonna say, uh, hello, David, and save that. And then when we come over here, we can see that this change is automatic, automatically happened. So hopefully this helps you if you've had uh, uh, problems like I did trying to get uh, React Native running inside of a pre-existing iOS application. This is what you need to do in order to be able to start using that. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up instead. And subscribe to my channel so I can do more content like this. With that, have a nice evening.